Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. Um, I just made a video about, uh, you know, talking about if you really want to learn from me, um, uh, SQL is really what I'm an expert at. Um, as a business intelligence engineer, there's another side to that that I'm also an expert at, and that is data visualization, um, working in any BI tool, whatever it is. I can work with it. Um, you need to understand that every BI tool is the same in the way that there's four accretive steps in the tool to do its job. Number one, get data. So every BI tool has a bunch of different databases that you can connect to. And the more, the merrier, the better. You, know, you want to have all the, the big players, you know, being able to suck that data into your BI tool. Number two is wrangle data. Every BI tool has a semantic layer. That's usually it's proprietary language to uh, wrangle the data, to, um, you know, change the data, to filter it, to transform it, to, to merge tables, to union tables. Um, uh, there's all sorts of, you know, data manipulation you can do. And uh, there, there's always a big question of where to do it. For me, I choose to do all that work in the database, rewriting SQL. And I like to leave the semantic layer alone um, in the BI tool. I don't want to create calculated columns. I don't want to filter data. I don't want to merge tables. I don't want to stack tables. I just want the final tables presented to me in the BI tool. I want to have thought out of all the things I want to visualize and know how to build that in tables and do all that work in a single SQL script that runs. And that makes the BI tool um, very seamless, you know, whereas when you're not using the semantic model, yes, you're going to be using it. Of course, you're going to have to define certain things. I, you know, I can relate to like Looker. You're going to have to learn a little bit of LookML. You know, you're going to have to use the semantic layer, uh, even though it gives you most of the code, which is great. Um, but you want to do the bare minimum. You really do. You don't want to do all the hefty work. You don't want to just import data raw into your BI tool. That's what I see so common. You you take the data exactly how it is, you know, from wherever it's sourced. You don't do anything in the database. You just move it to the BI tool and then you expect Power Query um, or whatever semantic model, LookML, um, uh, what else is there? There's, um, uh, you know, there's Tableau semantic layer. I think it's called VizQL. Uh, you know, Click has their own semantic model. That's what I just worked in. Um, you know, uh, you want to um, front load all processing in the database and, and do all all logic in the database and just um, in in the semantic model. You, of course, just have to join the tables together. You have to create your data model and the semantic model. And every BI tool has a way for you to build data models. You know, all dashboards are built off data models. And uh, you got to understand data modeling. And that's really the hardest concept probably in BI. And I think there's a lot of people with different theories. And, um, you know, I'm certainly have my theories and I'm very strict about it with my work where, you know, I control the granularity of every table I work with. And in every join, I'm always thinking about the granularity. I never want to extrapolate the granularity by doing a bad join. Um, you know, over the years, I've, I've, I've learned that. So yeah, number two is, is, is wrangle data. So number one, get data. Number two, wrangle data. Every BI tool has a semantic layer, and they're all difficult to learn. Uh, you know, it's like always a proprietary language, and uh, you gotta always learn the basics. Um, but you know, rest assured, 
if you front load all processing in the database, you don't really have to learn much about the semantic layer. You don't, you're not trying to do much in the semantic layer. You're just trying to join tables and define measures, but you're not doing anything else. So you're kind of leaving that slate empty. And uh, that's awesome for future migration because you really didn't do much in the semantic model. Uh, standing up uh, your, your same uh, solution in a new platform, whether it be a new database and a new BI tool, it's going to be much more seamless just copying the SQL script to the new database and then rebuilding it without having to translate uh, one semantic layer to another semantic layer. That's that's difficult work and it's uh, it's it's air prone. It's it's sketchy. Um, you know, it all depends on what your strength is. If you're a whiz at that, then you do you and you do that. But for me, I'm a SQL whiz and I'm not confident in semantic layers. And so I try to do as little as possible and do as much as possible in the database. Uh, front load all processing. So really always give the final tables to the BI tool and, and not have any further transformation take place that's necessary. The only thing is measure creation. You know, you really got to do that in the BI tool. Uh, you know, measures are, you know, sums and averages and count distincts and counts. And, you know, the calculate statement is always what you use in DAX. Um, you know, I always try to keep my measure definitions very simple. Sums across the entire table, averages across the entire table, not these crazy uh, conditional statements where it's like these rows don't count, these rows don't count, these don't count. You know, sometimes that's necessary, but you want, you know, your base KPI, really the meat of the dashboard, to just be a simple sum of the fact table. You know, like if some rows aren't needed for that base KPI, well, you probably don't need it. You know, you just, you want to, um, you know, get rid of all the, all the crap that uh, isn't going to be used and make uh, your primary measure just the sum or the average of the fact table. Uh, so, you know, it, you really got to know your, your data modeling and I just stick to dimensional modeling modeling. You know, I'm always trying to just build star schemas in the semantic model. I always just think of fact tables in dim tables. And there's always many various sorts of fact tables that I love to build, such as, you know, maybe a time series that is very, very wide or a columnar table, which is very, very long. It's just, you know, um, you know, there's aggregate cubes. There's um, there's tons of different data shapes, and uh, you know, transactional data. That's obviously the most common that comes out of systems. Um, you know, depending on the data shape, it opens up the window for certain visuals in the BI tool, and it, it's agnostic to whatever BI tool it is. You know, a certain visual needs this certain shape, and uh, if you take the data and you put it in all the different shapes, then in the BI tool, you can have the ability to use all the visuals and show the same theme in its, all its patterns. And uh, you know, with columnar data, that opens up the door to add new fields like mat hierarchies and stuff. And you know, looking at a matrix where you maybe got a hierarchy and uh, it's maybe pivoted by month or something, but you got something that's, um, you know, a, a very lovely matrix. You need a certain type of data to do that. You can't do that with a very wide table that doesn't have many rows, but kind of defines everything very wide. I mean, for my personal finance, that's where everything starts is this very wide table. I think in Excel, it's the easiest way to log it for me and, uh, you know, use functions and everything but for data visualization that's not the right way to look at data it's a pain in the butt you want to turn that into columnar so i take something that's 275 fields long and i turn it into a very uh long table that only has maybe 10 fields in it and i just take now the field that was once a field is now just an attribute value in a single field and then the value column has the value of every single metric 
across every single variable and it's an awesome table you know when you build that you're just in the golden realm of data viz that's what is probably the favorite of a of a data viz is is the columnar table um you know bar charts are great matrices are great for it uh there's a lot of great things for that uh, you know but wide tables can do a lot of things too um that are great and uh let me share my screen and I'll show some of my work. All right, so you know this is uh, Looker work, and uh, you know with any dashboard you want to have a front page, and this is the front page of our uh, internal project that we have in our company, and it's a great project, and we've all been had a hand in it. There's been 30, 40 developers who have helped in this project. Anyone who's on the bench helps. It's great. Uh, you know, moving it over to Power BI. Um, Here's the front page, you know, same thing, different though, you know, uh, but all in all, you want a front page. And uh, so, yeah, Looker, you know, Looker is really is tile based. Everything is a tile and, you know, building dashboards is very simple, but, you know, you're not going to get as sexy a dashboards as you would in Power BI or Tableau. It wouldn't, it's not going to be pixel perfect. Um, it's uh, pretty monotone, but it does the job of, of data and analytics and of, of dashboarding, and it does it very well. Uh, you know, this is the employee profile. So if you want to know about an employee at our company, you can just search for them, and this will really show everything about them. Uh, you know, this is when I started 2020. Um, I'm active. This is my manager, um, all that. Here are my skills, uh, you know, I'm really big on the BI tools, on SQL, on databases. You know, my fours are, you know, I should update this. I'm a lot of these are fives, but um, you know, databases and BI tools is where I'm really high. And then there's all sorts of things that, you know, what I I leave to other people. I don't, I don't, I don't know, don't, don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things I don't know. I think we all are like that. We can't know everything. Um, you know, that's what teams are for. And there's a, there's great people in our company who know how to put teams together. And uh, we all just coalesce and rock and roll and get a pro get the projects done. But you know, with a with a Looker dashboard, expect a, a top down scroll. It's you know, uh, shrinking something into into no scroll is 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 really not what you're gonna get um you know reports these are like reports and uh everything is in database in looker you, there's no option to import the data um you can i guess uh for speeding up purposes but um it's not the default and um you know it's it, it's it's like direct query is is the way to go and that means that um on the fly it it generates queries in the database um, and uh, the processing is happening in the database and nothing is no processing is really happening in looker you know looker is basically just sitting on top of the database and just telling telling the database to write these to generate these queries it's just a query generating tool for any database and then looker does the semantic layer work and turns it into visuals and kpis and builds everything but you know behind the scenes everything is just a query written to the database and it's generated on the fly so when you're working in looker you really want to front load your processing you don't want to have views you want to have uh you know partition tables that are screaming fast because it's going to have no choice but to directly have to query that data data uh, so you know don't don't um don't don't do views. Uh, don't don't build long chains of logics that need to be generated on the fly. That always just makes it slow for the end user, and that sucks. If it's a long dashboard, if it takes a while to work with, every time you have to change something, it takes 30 to a minute to render. Well, that just sucks. Uh, here's another dashboard I wrote um, called "The Plumber Is Not a Painter." Uh, this is a cool matrix that shows everybody's like off hours, whether they're on project and um, 
or, or on the bench. This is just great for our uh, schedulers to, to put us on projects. Uh, here's just a view of, in, in aggregate, the people who are fully booked versus who are available. Um, and our total staff is at 36. This is looking at data engineers. We can uh, look at any different, um, uh, you know, I think I'm in data analyst. There I am. Yeah, I'm an analytics engineer. So anyway, yeah, this is uh, another dashboard. Uh, here's for time sheets, looking at people's time sheets. Um, and skills, I love these kind of dashboards. Look at this. So this is the front page of a dashboard, and then there's a bunch of sub dashboards depending on where you click. So this is going to take you to a tool dashboard specific for tool, just honed in on what you just clicked, the database. So this is really telling you everything about everyone with uh, you know good database skills from high to medium and everything you want to know. If you want to go back to the front page, you just click this. So it's kind of like a dashboard network right here. This is a front page, and then it's got all these sub dashboards. I can take you to the skill um, dashboard. So this is another dashboard just honed in on skill, and we're looking at um, the SQL skill, the people with you know high familiarity, 24. I think I'm one of them. I would say so. So just uh, this is a cool dashboard network, and that's a really cool thing you can do in Looker, and you can't really do in other BI tools. Um, really cool. You know, this will take you to hone in on just the person. So you know, there's I think four or five different sub dashboards in this. Uh, yeah, so really cool. You know, uh, you can look at a certification. Here's everything you want to know about the certification. So think of how great of a data exploration tool that this dashboard is. You know, it really tells everything, uh, everything by everything. And uh, you can look at it for, for hours and minutes and, and really get lost in the data and find some patterns. And, you know, that's very intuitive, you know, to want to click and drill. And uh, the fact that it takes you to a whole new dashboard already dynamically filtered on what you just clicked just a great data exploration tool. Uh, so, yeah, that's all the Looker dashboards. I mean, there's plenty more. I got, um, if I go to my Phoenix work for this project, this is everything I've built in production. This is everything I've built in development and uh, admin stuff and then some validation. I guess this is really all my work and I like, I built myself um, a page or whatever you call this. And, uh, you know, it looks nice. It's just a great way to get to your work. You know, a good thing about what we've done for this project is just like the stay in your lane um, methodology where we've always, we had so many different uh, people come on board as Looker developers. And we just told people to stay in your lane, you know, try to build your new brand new Looker assets and, and try not to use other people's work and and change their work. Don't ever change other people's work. Just you know, stay in your lane, do what you do. But, um, you know, that's kind of how we did it. Everyone really just did data modeling and BI their own way, their own intuitive way. And um, it all just ended up as its final product. And, you know, I like that, you know, we all have different uh, beliefs and how to do BI. Some of the people that I work with don't have the same methodologies as me and it's okay to work with them i just stay in my lane you know what is my job for this project and i'm going to do that job and then he's going to do whatever his job is his way and i'm not going to give a crap the way he does it he's responsible for his work i'm responsible for mine i'm going to stay in my lane i'm not going to give a crap about how good he's doing or whatever i'm not going to have any partake in that even though i might have opinion on how to do what he's doing whatever that's not my job I'm going to stay in my lane. I don't, I don't bark up at people. You know, sometimes you feel work with people that you feel are incompetent, but the worst thing you can do is, you know, give them a hard time. You should help them and just work with whoever's you got and embrace anyone's weakness and just deal with it and finish the project. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, have a good one.